Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what's going on? What's up? I'm back. If this is your first time here, my name is Sal Vetri and this is my channel. I uh, primarily, or at least when I started, I started talking about DFS, daily fantasy sports, uh, football. That's when we started fantasy football, but we're going to be doing NBA, MLB, uh, maybe get into NHL, but daily fantasy sports is where I started. Now I'm getting into the sports betting realm. That's what this video is going to be about. So depending on when you're watching this, uh, hopefully it's in the next couple of days because the NFC, AFC championship games just going to talk about them pretty briefly and talk about where my side is in these. And let me just disclaim this by saying uh, I bet and I bet for probably entertainment reasons more than to try and win just because I know how difficult it is to win. You kind of have to make it like a full time job or at least devote a lot of time to it. And right now as a college kid trying to make these videos and have fun in DFS and win in DFS and put my time there, it's hard to do both, right? So I do bet, I don't bet a ton of money, a shit ton of money, uh, but I do bet each week and I, I like to actually look into some numbers and not just throw my money randomly into spots without really knowing what I'm betting on or having a confidence in what I'm betting. Um, I, again, I don't bet huge volume. So I want you to know that what I'm talking about here me like saying which sides I like, that's not me telling you to go bet this. It's a guarantee, right? I'm not no guru. I'm not some guy on Twitter saying these are my five locks of the week or something like that. No, I'm not, I'm not doing any of that stuff. That stuff's all bogus bullshit. Like none of that stuff. Uh, if you're buying people's picks packages, uh, they're probably just as good as you are. And at that point, uh, their marketing's probably good just to get you to buy it. So I tell you probably don't buy picks packages. Buying information is probably a good thing. Um, information, uh, projections, other things that, that might help you, but just people's picks, they can be doing anything, right? They can be making those picks 20 minutes before uh, and, and maybe they hit 50-50, right? And that's not what we want, right? So I just want to make this more so because I think it's going to be enjoyable. Maybe for you guys, it'll be entertaining. Also help you figure out where my head's at. I, I look a lot into daily fantasy sports and a lot of that stuff's going to translate into sports betting, right? It's just as simple as that. I actually have my notes right here from daily fantasy sports for these games. And uh, a lot of it's gonna actually be of use for the NFL game. So, I mean, I have the slate right now, right up on Fantasy Labs, not an affiliate. It's just a nice little dashboard to see where the lines open, where the lines currently are at, uh, how their movement was, how much percentage of bets are where. Uh, so, I mean, the big thing to talk about, and we'll start with that later game first, New England and the Chiefs. The big thing to talk about is that total coming down, right? Came 60 in some places, 59 and a half in most places, you can see right here. Uh, and now it's all the way down to 56 points. It's dropped a ton, right? Uh, it's dropped three and a half points on average, sp some spots four points. That's a huge movement. So what does that mean? Uh, there's a reason. It's the weather, right? Frigid temperatures, maybe a lot of wind. People are saying some snow. I don't know. It's, it's all over the place. Last night I saw that it's nothing now. Now it's going to be 20 degrees at nighttime uh, with a little bit of a wind chill. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, the thing to mention is that his five worst QBR games were in his five coldest games overall. Now that's a stat to look at right on the high level, but you have to break down into that stat. Was he playing better defenses? Uh, for the most part, yes. Um, he played better defenses. One of those games was last week in the playoffs. He's obviously playing a better defense because most times there's good defenses in the playoffs. Uh, a couple of those other games were in cold weather games, which are in Denver. Uh, and Denver has a decent defense, right? Or playing Denver one time in Denver, playing Denver later in the year in KC, uh, a little bit colder. Those are decent defenses, right? So he, he is playing better defenses in those colder competitions. So you have to take that into account if you do see that stat. Don't just say, oh, Patrick Mahomes, five worst games, five coldest temperatures. I'm betting the Patriots, right? It's not that simple. You have to be thinking a little bit down into it. Now you can go and just bet the Patriots right there, but just know that there's probably uh, a lot more to it. And if you do bet them at that point, you might be missing out on some key information. So, I mean, I'll say this about the lines moving down. If you do watch me, usually you know this. And also if this is your first time watching me, I should start by saying welcome to the channel. Uh, I'd appreciate it if, if you do like sports betting, daily fantasy sports, fantasy football, whatever it might be, sports in general. Appreciate it if you could hit subscribe. We're trying to grow a lot more, trying to turn this hobby into a career. And if you hit that thumbs up like button right now, it's going to help me a ton. So I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Move me up to search rankings. Comment down below which, which, which is your favorite bet of the week for this game. Uh, which team do you like? If it's a money line bet, if it's a, if it's a line spread, if it's an over under. If you don't know what any of those things are, check out my previous video on the basics of sports betting and some other things that are going to be going up in that playlist. But I don't really take weather into account too much, right? I'm probably going to hop on the over at 56. And I'm going to hope though, I'm going to wait till like Sunday. And I'm going to hope that this comes down to 55, even lower, because a lot of people are going to lose their ass by just betting the, the under, right? They're going to see cold temperatures, they're going to see all this stuff. Uh, for, the first, for the most part, I'm not too worried about that. Deep balls, Patrick Mahomes throwing deep balls into the cradle of Tyreek Hill. Patrick Mahomes throwing over the middle into Travis Kelsey's very sticky gloves that don't drop any balls in general. 
I'm not worried about that. I'm not worrying about Travis Kelsey's hands hurting, catching a 30-yard pass from Mahomes. Like, the cold's not going to worry me at all. Wind, I know wind's a big factor a lot of people take into consideration. They say it's the most important thing because it affects the pass. Wind doesn't affect short passes. Wind doesn't affect intermediate passes. It affects deep passes, which we do have guys throwing deep passes. Patrick Mahomes will be throwing deep passes to Tyree Kill and Sammy Watkins and Chris Conley, potentially Travis Kelsey. So that is a worry, right? That's a little bit of a worry. But lots of stadiums and uh, majority of the stadiums, I... I argue probably all the stadiums they channel wind out if it's a lot if it's windier outside of the stadium the way that stadiums are built built up like this it kind of pushes the wind to go right over it they don't swoop down into it at least for most stadiums that's not the case so i'm not too worried about the wind i'm not worried about any of that stuff uh, i'm gonna let this total drop as much as possible and then i'm gonna jump on it so that's why the total dropped right uh, we've had a slight line movement upwards in the other game so some people are hammering the over and it makes sense the public likes the over uh so when you see two teams that went for a banana of points the last time that they played the Saints and the Rams uh you I expected this total to go up a little more actually and I still expect it to because uh relatively early Friday morning I mean the public likes to get on these lines as late as possible so yeah so that's just the totals I mean personally I'm thinking the over uh at 60 points I would have actually taken the under in this game the Chiefs at home their defense is a little bit better you have to imagine that the Patriots are going to try and keep Mahomes off the field a decent amount Sony Michelle had a lot of success last week Sony Michelle had a lot of success in the first matchup right last week and the first matchup he went for 100 yards and two touchdowns he's a great back when he gets 20 plus touches he does a lot with them he usually goes over 100 yards so the Patriots play at the fastest pace right in the NFL they're number one in pace that's going to actually work to their detriment against a team like the Chiefs. The Chiefs are pretty slow in pace because they just move down the field very quickly, right? They're not, um, or they're, they're pretty late in time of possession uh, because they move down the field pretty quickly. They don't hold the ball a bunch. If the, if the Chiefs are moving down the field and scoring quick, they give the ball back to the Patriots and the Patriots play with a fast pace and they're going to be going down the field. If they don't convert on a lot of those possessions and they punt it back to the Chiefs and the Chiefs go right down the field and score, it's going to be hard for Brady to come from behind. I mean, he's 40 years old. That's the only thing where the cold kind of comes in. You're old, a little tight, loosen up your body a little bit. Not too worried, though. He's checked down Tom right now, so James White's going to get a lot. Julian Edelman's going to get a lot. But the point is, uh, the, the Patriots play at a fast pace, but they're going to have to try and change, I would imagine, the way that they play for this game, right? I'd imagine they're going to go to the ground more. They're going to be feeding Sony Michelle 20-plus touches. They're going to be throwing little dump-ups to a guy like James White, which are basically 7- to 10-yard runs, rushing attempts, except they're at the line of scrimmage so it counts as a reception if he's throwing it to him i feel like the patriots are gonna have to slow this game down now if the total is down to 56 54 whatever it might get down to i like the over just because we're pulling down four plus points really for no reason right i don't think the cold's going to impact that too much i still see there being a lot of success on the ground and in the air if this total for some reason stayed at 60 i just want to let you know that my mindset was under or 59 and a half under i think the patriots try and keep Mahomes off the field um, and I still do think that's the case. I just, if I'm getting an extra five free points, I'm going to be taking the over. I think there's that advantage there. And I really do wish that I took the under when it was at 60. And then I took the over when it's going to get down to maybe 55. Because then I have five points in the middle where if it lands in the middle, I win both my bets, right? You're getting in that middle. That's a territory that sports books don't like. Maybe you're in that situation. If you bet the under at 60, there's no reason probably right now that you shouldn't be taking the over because you're getting four or five points potentially in that middle ground to leverage right now. So that's where I'm at with that right now. Overs, unders are pretty straightforward. I mean, we can get into the spreads now. That's the main part, right? So if we're looking at the Rams and the Saints, and I'm still not positive which side of this I like, I'd probably lean towards the Rams. A couple things to point out here. Uh, number one, I mean, obviously the Rams are in the road. The fact that this is a, a three and a half point favorite is probably because the Superdome so home and away, when you're home, you get a three-point advantage just baked in, right? Superdome's probably a three-and-a-half-point advantage, if not a four-point advantage. It's one of the greatest advantages in sports. You have certain players, Aaron Rodgers, he'll move the line a bunch. Uh, players like that, that it gives an advantage to a team. The Superdome is that advantage for the Saints, right? Gives them kind of an extra half a point there. It's just that great, especially in the playoffs. Rams have to come on the road. Jared Goff, two big things to point out. When he has Cooper Cup in the lineup, or since he hasn't had Cooper Cup in the lineup, his splits are insane. It's, he has like 70 less yards passing. His QBRs dropped so much, like less than a touchdown per game. He was averaging 330 plus yards a game with Cooper Cup. Now he's well below 300 yards a game without him. So that's something to be worried about. His road and away splits throughout his entire career are something to be worried about. But he does have a good matchup, right? He does have a good matchup in the passing game. The Rams on the ground now have this du dual threat of C.J. Anderson and Todd Gurley, although they're not playing who they played last week. 
Uh, they're playing a much harder defense now. They're going to be going up against the Saints, who are number three overall in rush DVOA uh, against the run. So it's going to be a little bit tougher for those guys. I don't expect C.J. Anderson to have the same type of game. I believe this game is going to have to go through Jared Goff. And in fantasy, I like this game going through Jared Goff. I think he can pile up yards. I think he can get a few touchdowns. But in terms of real life winning the game, I don't like this game going through Jared Goff. In terms of keeping the game within three and a half, that's where I'm like, ooh, I kind of can see that. But right now I'm on the Saints just because Jared Goff has been pretty pitiful on the road. Without Cooper Cup, he's kind of missing his security blanket all year long. Uh, and if they're not going to have rush, a uh, rushing upside, I don't know if I trust Jared Goff to be beating or at least keeping this game within three and a half. Uh, against Drew Brees and Sean Payton in the Dome. Uh, I think this is definitely a big game where we can see a guy like Michael Thomas who's going up against the Rams who are 28th against uh, wide receiver ones, which Michael Thomas is a clear wide receiver one. I think he's going to do pretty well, uh, just as good potentially as he did against the Eagles last week. He's going to have a lot of space to get loose. I know that Aqib Tlaib back helps the Rams defense, but if you actually look at Aqib Tlaib, there's a stat out there saying that when he's in the lineup, uh, opposing quarterbacks have like a 76 pass rating when he's out it's like 114 it's a huge difference right uh, and that makes sense because you have backups filling in for him but I dig deeper into this and his like seven full starts he played Josh Rosen twice he played Mitch Trubisky he played the ghost of Matt Stafford he played uh, who else did he play Derek Carr he played Nick Mullins uh, that's who he was going up against. These are guys who have bad pay passer ratings regardless. So you have to break down into those stats a little bit more. I think Tlaib is a little bit overrated and he's definitely on the tail end of his career and his peak. I think Drew Brees is going to be able to pick them apart. I think they will have success on the ground as well like they did the first time. I just like this matchup a lot. Uh, if, if you're giving me the Saints and three and a half at home in the Superdome against this Rams team who can put up points, but they can't really stop you on, on the backside of that. Yes, they're probably the best team left in terms of pressuring the quarterback. The Saints do protect Drew Brees really well. Uh, they just scheme to get the ball out quick if they believe that they're up against any type of pressure. Uh, guys like Alvin Kamara, again, Michael Thomas. They get Ted, Ted Ginn back, who gives him those big upsides. He, he's leading a lot of models in air yards, meaning the amount of yards he gets on passes. Even if he doesn't complete them, just air yards. So they have a big deep threat back there against Marcus Peters, who's just been terrible this year, against Tlaib, who I mentioned on the back end of his career. I like the Saints in this one. I like the three and a half points in this one. Um, in terms of over-under, I'm not really sure where I am on that one yet, but I do believe that Jared Goff will have success passing the ball here. I do not believe that they will have as much success on the ground, although Todd Gurley last time out had a decent game against them. Now you have sort of this dual threat. You know that they're having success at the offensive line. They have a, lot, they have a really good matchup at offensive line against the Saints' defensive line. Um, I do see this game approaching, obviously, that 56 and a half point total. I don't think as of right now I'm touching it. If I had to lean one way, uh, I'd probably lean on the under. Saints have been better at home. They can stop the run. Uh, they're allowing just a lot less points at home, right? Better at home. They can stop the run. Uh, and the pace of these two teams right now is pretty fast paced, which means there's going to be a lot of clock. Uh, uh, potentially run off in this game, right? Fast pace teams means you get extra possessions, but when fast pace uh, it results in you rushing the ball a little bit more, like these teams like to do, especially the Saints, since getting Mark Ingram back like week five, just absolutely uh, love rushing the ball between their two running backs, potentially between three running backs, whatever it might be. I think that this one is going to have low times of possessions overall uh, for for the for the Rams at least, and I think that the Saints are going to be able to hold the ball a little bit, pulling down that over under. Again, I'd lean under in this situation. I do like the Saints at minus three and a half. Uh, I think that they just have an ideal matchup in terms of what their playmakers, Michael Thomas, can do. In terms of Alvin Kamara coming out of the backfield against a, a Rams defensive line that's pretty slow to attack the left side of the field, which is where Alvin Kamara runs a lot of his routes out of the backfield. Uh, so that's where I'd be going with this one. We mentioned over-under in the, in the New England and the Chiefs game. Uh, a couple of things that I like here. So New England's actually pretty good against defending the intermediate deep middle of the field. Uh, they're pretty good against wide receiver ones and wide receiver twos, right? So that's Tyree Kill, potentially Sammy Watkins or Travis Kelsey, whoever they see as that wide receiver two. In the past, it's been Travis Kelsey. Last three matchups, he hasn't scored a touchdown against them. And the most yards he had, he's had like 60, 66, and 44, something like that in the last three matchups. Uh, Belichick's been saying he's the guy we want to stop. But Tyree Kill in two games against them has gone for hundred average of 130 plus a game, two touchdowns a game. Absolutely torching Stefan Gilmore. Uh, he had double coverage last time out, uh, and Jason McCourty just ran a bad play. He blew his own, and Tyreek got a 70-yard touchdown in that game. Uh, that was earlier in the season. So, what does this mean? It means that the Patriots are good against wide receiver number ones, but it's tough to be good against Tyreek Hill. He could run by anybody. Good against wide receiver number twos is where, okay, will they be taking out Travis Kelsey again? 
that leaves Sammy Watkins in a good situation in a mismatch. In a mismatch, he's high uh, body weight. He has be- more body weight and more height on his opponent in, in the Patriots cornerback three position. So I do like the fact that Patrick Mahomes Hill's going to be open. He's going to get deep. But even if they take him away, he has guys like Kelsey who are going to have a decent matchup because they'll be covered by a linebacker. And he has guys like Sammy Watkins now back and healthy. I think Sammy Watkins is going to be a big difference maker in this game. Maybe he doesn't have a huge game in terms of 100 yards and a touchdown or 100 yards and two touchdowns. But in terms of what it opens up, it opens up a, a, a talented wide receiver who's another option for Patty Mahomes if they end up doubling Tyree Kill and if they end up putting safety help on Travis Kelsey, whatever it might be, right? Not having Sammy Watkins makes you have to rely on a guy like um, on a guy like Chris Conley, who's not nearly as talented, not nearly. I mean, Sammy Watkins, a top 10 draft pick. It's just a big difference. And then you want to go to the running game. So Kareem Hunt, last two times that he's played his two games against the Patriots, over 200 yards total in the receiving game alone. Receiving game alone, he's had two, over 200 yards total against the Patriots in his two games, Kareem Hunt. I know he's not on the team. I'm just painting a picture for you. He's had three touchdowns in those games, right? Damian Williams, in his, like, what, four small starts, has caught 23 of 24 balls, 160 yards, and two touchdowns in the air, just in the receiving game. So this sets up perfectly for dump-offs. So, again, another option if Tyreek Hill is taken out on the deep balls. You still have Sammy Watkins, who's a weapon. This Chiefs offense, I don't have to tell you, it's great. You have Damian Williams coming out of the backfield, catching every single ball and doing a lot with it after the catch, right? Averaging almost eight yards per catch out of the backfield against these slow Patriot linebackers who have not had success against defending this Chiefs running back scheme and nobody's really had success in it in it whoever fills in whether it's Kareem Hunt whether it's Jamal Charles back in the day whether it's uh uh Damian Williams bench where they all do pretty well in this system uh, I think that's going to be an advantage for the Chiefs big time obviously they're at home I like the Chiefs minus three here it's hard betting against the Patriots because they've won 60 percent of their spreads and in the playoffs Tom Brady's just a different animal right you want to talk about the Patriots side of the ball and how they could potentially win Julian Edelman uh and James White that's how they won last week, right? Julian Edelman, 150 yards. James White, 15 catches. James White, he catches majority of his balls to the left side of the field. The Chiefs are actually good at defending the running back or better than league average at defending the running back's passes or short passes, which are most of James White's passes, to the left side of the field. They have more speed going that way. Justin Houston, whoever it might be, going that way. So if you want to paint a picture for the Patriots winning, it's that. It's Jul- it goes through Julian Edelman. It goes through James White. Maybe Gronk gets active in the end zone. He still has 25% target share when he plays in the in the red zone. Uh, he's still still a mismatch there. Uh, but I see Julian Edelman potentially getting doubled here. And if he gets doubled, you have to rely on Chris Hogan and, and Philip Dorsett, who Chris Hogan does have a good matchup in terms of height and weight in, in, at his position against Ward, the uh, outside corner there. But again, it's Chris Hogan. He's running a lot of routes and he's just not converting that well. Uh, seems like he's having a major down year. He is having a major down year. So all that said, uh, I'm currently leaning on the over for this New England and Chiefs game because the total has been coming down. If you bet the under earlier in the week, I'd urge you probably to get the middle and bet the over here. I'm leaning on the Saints minus three and a half. There's just a lot of things I like here. Jared Goff on the road has just been uh, pretty bad uh, fantasy wise and also in real life. I do like Jared Goff though. It's kind of counterintuitive based on some other things. Uh, But yeah, that's about it breaking it down right there and then just spread wise not really picking anything in this uh rams and saints game and in terms of the patriots game spread wise i lean towards the chiefs so thank you guys appreciate it my name is sal best of luck in your bets this weekend make sure you subscribe like all that stuff check out the pdf down below and get some more sports betting tips peace